G'day, I'm Matthew Mason Cox, President of the New South Wales Legislative Council. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to another historic member of the council, Sir Alfred Stephen. Coming from a dynasty of lawyers and arriving in Australia at a young age, Sir Alfred served for many years as Chief Justice of New South Wales. Notably, in 1856, he became the first president of the Legislative Council under responsible government, which means he was the first person to preside over the chamber after the parliament evolved to have both an upper and lower house. Sir Alfred's presidency lasted just eight months though, as it was ultimately considered imprudent for the colony's chief dispenser of justice to hold such a political appointment. Still, he remained as a member of the house until 1858, when legislation was passed precluding judges from sitting in parliament. After retiring from the bench, Sir Alfred served a further 10 years in the council at different times in the 1870s and 1880s. For much of this time, he was Lieutenant Governor and his various resignations from the council allowed him to serve as Acting Governor of the Colony on three separate occasions. Now, let it be said that while Sir Alfred's list of achievements and honours is extensive, he was rarely far from controversy. As a man of law, he has been criticised for being harsh in his sentencing and for his frequent use of capital punishment. He was even described as the Methuselah of the Gallows, and it was said the Stephen family name was no synonym for mercy. As a member of the council, Sir Alfred was a prolific legislator. Perhaps the most notable piece of legislation was his divorce bill, its progressive provisions in almost stark contrast to his sometimes perceived cruelty in court. The divorce bill sought to extend the grounds of divorce to cover desertion, habitual drunkenness, assault and more. Yet after having been carried through both houses, the bill was refused royal assent. Undeterred, Sir Alfred went on to introduce the bill in every parliamentary year until the 1890s, when after being carried, the bill received royal assent and was finally passed into law. This laid the foundation for today's modern divorce laws. Also notable during his time in the council, as President Sir Alfred chaired the committee responsible for preparing the House's new standing orders under responsible government. Standing orders are the rules and regulations that govern the chamber, and some of those overseen by Sir Alfred remain in one form or another to this very day. The shifting and changing of these standing orders is something Sir Alfred's marble likeness has been able to watch over the years, perched as it is on the chamber's walls. His bust was commissioned by public subscription after his resignation as Chief Justice in 1873. It was sculpted by Signor Achille Simonetti to commemorate his services to the colony and presented to the House in 1877 while Sir Alfred was still a member. Simonetti himself was a master sculptor who would go on to sculpt half of the busts that appear in the Council's chamber. He in fact crafted many significant works, including the fountain statue of Captain Arthur Phillip, the first governor of New South Wales, which is just down the road from Parliament in the Royal Botanic Gardens. Interestingly, ours isn't the only bust of Sir Alfred. After his death in 1894, the National Art Gallery commissioned a different sculptor to honour Sir Alfred as a trustee. In that bust, he's depicted in his latter years, and while the newspapers of the time reported the bust to be well received, the story goes that his family thought it made Sir Alfred look too, shall we say, weathered and worn out. As a result, the family asked for Simonetti's talented hand to again capture the man in younger, fresher times. This resulted in the creation of a third and final bust of Sir Alfred, which bears a striking similarity to our own. 